Right now on WBZ, a deadly fall from a red line platform. How investigators think the victim wound up on the third rail. Tonight, Hurricane Ernesto is moving north, causing major flooding and impacting some of the most popular swimming areas here. A few spotty showers for tomorrow, but otherwise pretty nice day ahead with temperatures right around 80 degrees. But we're going to be talking about a chance for heavy rain coming up on Monday. And new security for a North End event steeped in tradition. The restrictions you'll notice at this year's Fisherman's Feast. Now, live on WBZ TV and streaming on CBS News Boston, this is WBZ News. Now at 11, could today's deadly accident at a T-stop in Boston have been prevented? Transit police say a man was killed when he fell from the platform onto the electrified third rail. Thanks for being with us tonight at 11. I'm Lisa Hughes. Investigators say the victim was at the Park Street stop when he fell. WBZ's Laura Hafley spoke with commuters who say the platforms should be safer. Police say the victim may have been under the influence at the time. T riders we spoke to say they're getting more concerned, claiming incidents like this happen far too often. Saturday morning just before noon, police say a man stumbled onto the red line T tracks, landing on the third rail. He did not survive. It's a very unfortunate event. No one could have predicted that. Alexis Duddy was on the T at the time, forced to change trains. It was really confusing to try and figure out where we were going. Sad, but not surprised when she learned why. It's honestly one of those things where, like, unfortunately, it feels like a reality in Boston. It's one of those things that I'm not really surprised. Duddy claiming the safety measures in place like yellow lines and announcements might not be enough. The subway has always kind of been considered, oh, it's dangerous. Police say the victim may have been impaired or under the influence when he died. I think it's sad and I've heard a few other cases of it happening. Frequent T riders like Rob hoping the MBTA is making safety and accident prevention a priority. I mean, maybe some kind of barrier. I know that costs a lot of money, but if you make it a little bit harder for people to fall over, I would like them to do something about it. Police are still investigating the circumstances around this incident, but as of now, foul play is not suspected. In Boston, Laura Hafley, WBZ News. Breaking now, state police are investigating a homicide in New Bedford. They say they got the call early this morning that two men were fighting. The caller said they heard a gunshot. When officers got to the scene, 26-year-old Nicholas Miller was suffering from a gunshot. He was taken to the hospital where he then died. And breaking in New Hampshire, a deadly crash in Candia. The crash you're about to see shut down Route 101 westbound for hours this afternoon. And tonight, police say three people were killed when a truck heading eastbound sideswiped a car that then shot across the median and hit another car in the westbound lanes. Two people who were in one of those cars survived. They were taken to the hospital. Police are investigating. They say the driver of the truck who was killed was speeding. Tonight, Hurricane Ernesto is moving up the East Coast, flooding the Carolinas and taking down trees and power lines. Here at home, we're seeing its effects, dangerous rip currents along the Cape and the islands. Next weather meteorologist Alyssa Andrews joins us now. And Alyssa, how much longer is that a concern in our area? Right, well, at least for as far as these dangerous rip currents go through Sunday evening, so through tomorrow night, you're going to want to avoid swimming in these areas that we have highlighted here. That includes some North Shore beaches, the Cape and Islands, and even into the south facing beaches of Rhode Island. So that's going to be through tomorrow night, but the higher wave heights can go through Monday evening. So that's where we're going to be concerned with that as Ernesto is far off our coastline to our east. Now, locally, weather wise, we're doing OK right now. We've got some cloudier skies, body rain showers. Tomorrow we're expecting some on again, off again rain, and that can include into tomorrow morning by about 9 a.m. We'll see some light showers roll through into the afternoon, though. It starts to really dry out, so no um, reason to cancel any outdoor plans tomorrow by any means, but it's not going to be totally dry without incident. And then as we get into Monday, that's where we're going to be concerned with the heavier downpours, more widespread rain, and even some thunderstorms mixed in. We're going to be talking about this because this is going to be a potential
potential alert day as we get closer to Monday. So be prepared for some heavier rain on the morning commute and the evening commute for Monday to start the week off. Right now, 65 degrees in Boston. We are getting rid of some of those clouds and we're actually getting rid of some of the wildfire haze and smoke we've been dealing with too to get rid of the filtered sun. But we do have some heavy showers on the way for Monday. And after that clears out, we're actually going to be looking at a really nice stretch of weather. So there is some good news in the forecast, but we do have to get through a couple of tricky days ahead. We'll have more details that in our full forecast here in just a bit. Lisa. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Alyssa. Voters decide who wins the presidential race in just 80 days, and both major campaigns are making a push for votes in the coming days in Pennsylvania. Vice President Kamala Harris is hoping to sway voters after unveiling her economic plan, while former President Trump is hoping to turn the state red once again. Natalie Brand has more tonight from Washington. Former President Donald Trump rallied supporters Saturday in the key battleground of Pennsylvania, his second rally in the state since last month's assassination attempt. 80 days from now, we are going to defeat a communist known as Kamala Harris. The Republican presidential candidate aimed his latest attacks at Vice President Kamala Harris's economic policy agenda. She says she's going to lower the cost of food and housing starting on day one. But day one for Kamala was three and a half years ago. So why didn't she do it then? Harris unveiled her plans to try and lower costs on Friday, including a proposed federal ban on price gouging. Together, we will build what I call an opportunity economy. Recent polls in Pennsylvania show a tightening race between Harris and Trump, a state he narrowly won in 2016 but lost in 2020. The economy is horrible. We need, we need change. J.D. Vance for Trump, absolutely 100% better than Walz's for Harris. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz campaigned in Nebraska Saturday, the state where the Democratic vice presidential candidate was born and raised. We believe in the promise of America. We just have to fight. Governor Walls and Vice President Harris are kicking off a bus tour of western Pennsylvania on Sunday, a day before the start of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. Well, visitors on Beacon Hill won't forget this protest anytime soon. Demonstrators calling for gender parity went topless on Boston Common. Protesters say if men are allowed to take off their shirts in public, women should have the same right. They marched around the park and up to the State House. They point to Nantucket beaches, which allow anyone to go topless as precedent. Organizers say it is the first demonstration of its kind in Boston, one they hope encourages lawmakers to rethink rules that they say are not fair to women. Well, the annual Fisherman's Feast brings locals and visitors to the North End for great food and live music. And this year, the neighborhood is stepping up security. There are only three points of entry into the feast. They are clearly marked. Police and barricades make sure that no one tries to get in elsewhere. A private security force is also searching guests on their way in. People in the neighborhood tell us this is necessary because of disorderly conduct last year. In the past, it's been just kids just gathering, just coming in and just causing a disturbance with uh, uh, coming all together and having nip bottles and just drinking and uh, jamming up everything that's going on with our entertainment. So it, it's more of a nuisance than anything. Organizers say they don't expect that kind of trouble this year, but you should know if you're going to the last day tomorrow of the feast, there are no backpacks allowed inside the festival. You also should be prepared to be searched if you bring one. The curious incident of the cat in the parking lot. Missing for weeks how a Somerville family thinks Harry might have stowed away for an adventure that ended at Logan. And we are getting ready for rain on the way. So at times that can be a bit heavy, especially on the Monday morning and evening commutes. We'll talk about that in our forecast next.